It's January 1st, uh, 2024, <clears throat> and the new year brought really good evidence of why deer and even elk can move through a lot without any problems. Perfectly free movement. And so we're going to follow an elk that walked through this morning. And you can see the pictures of it that are associated with this video. So this is Lot 7 McKenzie Lane. And I have, we have wood piles, perfectly legal. They've been checked actually that we, our whole lot here uh, conforms to the ladder fuels reduction standards. And we've been burning this firewood as we go. But if you look, there are small gaps between some of the racks of firewood and the elk decided that it needed to get from West Cascade Drive over to McKinsey Lane and on further east. So this morning about 10 a.m. it came through and thanks to my trusty little dog Bo here we're able to track him coming through. So here we have the first of the tracks. There are the depressions you see in the ground there. And the elk, so not surprisingly, didn't choose to try to go between two log piles. Instead, being a smart wild creature, familiar with the Sun River development and all of the things that it has that can have to be circumvented, but can be done so without any trouble at all. So I want to point out also that the elk just moseyed along here. It was not in any hurry. It was not in any danger of being entrapped. It was not in any danger of not being able to migrate. Whether or not it wanted to, I'm not sure. We've seen it on the lot here several times in the past month or so. But again, although there is limited space between some of the log racks, the elk had plenty of room. Now consider that this amount of structure, or if you want to call it just physical, barriers that exist on the lot uh, in total with the amount of wood that one is able to store is much more significant than what would be allowed with just a few plant exclosures and the plant exclosures themselves would present no more problem to the elk or the deer now We'll come back over and again look at where the elk went. Here's his tracks moving out across the lot. Here's the gap, which is approximately three feet between these two log piles. And guess what? The elk decided it wasn't really necessary to go through those, that gap because even if it had wanted to head north, it would have just gone through the open part that's on the rear of the lot. The elk then moseyed on over, and as the soil got thicker, the tracks are a little harder to find, but I'm retracing its steps, and you can see, see as it came behind these trees in the photo that are associated with this video. So the elk comes out, gets to the road, and then what does it face? What are the barriers to its free movement? There's a garage, parked cars, a house, more parked cars, a truck, and a house. And you look off in the distance there, right in the gap between those houses is a play structure. And then there's another house. So if there's any problem associated with the deer and elk moving east to migrate, wandering around in search of food, 
or moving west when they migrate again in the spring. It's these vehicles, the houses, the play structures that are much larger than a plant enclosure exclosure would be, and more houses. And here's the final of this video. This house, which presents a barrier that our lot does not, and this play structure, which presents another barrier that ours does not, and the hedges all in front of the house, which present barriers that ours do not, that's owned by one of the most vociferous opponents of allowing other owners to have plant protections, board director Scott Gillies.